Welcome everyone. Um, today we're going to be talking about keyword research for Amazon Japan. Amazon Japan is Amazon's third largest marketplace and it was established about 10 years ago. So it's really good to have a good Amazon strategy. And today, today we're going to be talking about some of the interesting things about the Japanese language, um, you know, what uh, how Japanese people use the language, how we can use the language, how we can set up our keywords um, in a way that we can maximize and optimize our listings for Japan. So, you know, creating a listing is obviously quite easy. You can just get someone to translate your stuff and put it up there and, you know, uh, that's okay. But if you really wanna excel, um, you know, on Japan, you've gotta have certain elements um, in your title, in your bullet points, in your backend keywords, and also in your advertising that are unique to Japan. And you won't have that uh, complexity that Japan has uh, because of uh, the language, right? So, um, you know, first of all, when I went to Japan, like, uh, Oh gosh, so many years ago, um, there were many things that I, you know, noticed about Japan and Japanese that were very different from English. So I'm just going to share those with you. So one, um, you know, one interesting thing that um, I observed right away was as I was learning the language was that there are uh, no spaces between words, uh, which was kind of interesting because you know in English uh, we have like every word has spaces between them, so you can tell. Uh, where the word ends. Uh, not so with Japanese. So this is just an, a recent news article from one of the Japanese newspapers. Um, and as you can see, uh, these are all words. They're just stuck together. So only someone who understands will know that this is a word. This is a word. These two are a word. These four, these eight are coronavirus. <laughs> so this is a word. Uh, this is one word and so on. So there is no separation of uh, words when it comes to um, their normal text. Um, so what does, you know, this kind of poses some challenges for us, especially when we're trying to look at readability of our listings. And also when um, we try to look at um, how Amazon's algorithm is actually reading all of this stuff and how they're interpreting all of this stuff. So, um, so we'll look at some more examples, uh, but this is just the first thing that uh, I wanted to share with you. The second thing uh, that I wanted to share is that there are four language scripts uh, running in Japan and people love to mix and match them. So um, as you can see here, like this is just a scene from one of the um, very busy electronics uh, districts called Akihabara. And I've walked this road many times, um, but as you can see, you know, they, they mix up uh, English with uh, this script with, um, you know, these, uh, this is of course Korean, so different, um, but you get the idea. So they mix up everything and they present, um, you know, that's how they're used to, they're used to a lot of detail. If you can see, this looks very cramped and so much detail, like every little board here has lots and lots of detail. Well, that's what they love. I mean, if you open any magazine in Japan, even if you just search for Japanese magazines online, you will see every page is crammed with information. So it, they just love having lots and lots of details um, and they don't mind you know, reading through them and actually uh, coming to a conclusion about uh, the product. So this is just a very typical uh, thing that I noticed and I thought this might be interesting, you know, especially when you look at your uh, images, for example, the first image of course has to follow uh, Amazon's guidelines where you have like a white background and so on. But the second, third and so on can have a lot of detail, you know, because Japanese people love that sort of detail. All right, so um, next, let me show you the four alphabets that I just mentioned. So we have um, there are four different scripts or four different alphabets that um, Japanese people use, all right? And I'm gonna explain them. And we're also gonna do a little um, kind of uh, exercise together. So just kind of pay attention for a little bit. So the first uh, script they have is called the hiragana, all right? 
And this is the Japanese script, right? So this has alphabets, just like English has alphabets. Uh, these are uh, something like 50 plus alphabets. And uh, most of these alphabets have the vowel and the consonant uh, merged into one character. So this thing over here is sa. Uh, in other words, this, this thing, I've written the same thing here in English. Uh, it's, uh, it is sa, S-A, okay? So all of their um, alphabets go like ra, di, ru, re, ro, ka, ki, ku, ke, ko. So they're like each alphabet has the, the consonant and the vowel merged into one. So that's one thing to remember. It's in the Japanese script. Um, the second script they have is called kanji. Uh, and kanji is basically Chinese script, okay? So Japanese people actually um, absorbed Chinese. They kind of imported it from China like thousands of years ago and they simplified it. So their um, script is, you know, kind of has a lot of common uh, characters um, that they share with the Chinese script, but it is a simplified version of that. So to give you an example, in China, you can have 60,000 or more of these um, characters. Uh, and each character is almost like a, is a picture. It's a phonetic, it's kind of like a, a picture that describes certain things. So it has elements, like this element is one element, this is one element, this is one element. So they kind of mix and match these elements and almost like draw a picture that to a Chinese person will make total sense. Uh, so this is the Chinese script and the Japanese people have kind of made this a little bit simpler by uh, modifying uh, a few strokes, like these are uh, brush strokes. Uh, so they might simplify it in that way. So anyway, this is an important thing to know because this is a whole word in itself, right? This whole thing is one word. Um, next, we have the third script, which is called katakana. And this is a script that Japanese people uh, devised for uh, representing foreign words. So things like Starbucks, it's a foreign word, and they will use this character instead of using this character for, um, or the, these uh, characters instead of these characters. So they will reserve hiragana for their native words, and they will reserve um, this, this, these characters for foreign words. Um, and as you can see, uh, these the hiragana script is kind of curvy. It's got kind of like curves and flow and stuff like that, whereas katakana tends to be very tight and rigid, and it's got like you know, sharp edges and so on. So that's the way to figure out if something is a katakana or a hiragana if you don't know the language at all, right? So that's the way to uh, understand it. Um, and then finally, they have what they call romaji, which is nothing but the English alphabet, right? So they will, uh, romaji as in coming from Rom or Roman, Roman alphabet, right? So uh, for example, all these words here, they are sa, they are sa. This is sa, this is sa, this is sa, and this is sa. Um, and so for your keyword research, when you find a word that represents your main, um, your, your product, for example, um, it's important to, to, to try and understand if that word um, is going to have all four of these or will it only have three? Typically they'll have three versions of um, or ways of describing that product, right? So for example, when you say Starbucks, uh, they will have uh, a, you know, a, an equivalent here and they won't have a kanji because kanji is reserved for like traditional Japanese words that never, and obviously Starbucks is a new entity, right? It wasn't there hundreds and thousands of years ago. So kanji is basically reserved for words that are purely um, like historically been around for a long, long time. So with that background, I want to show you what a typical listing looks like, what a you know, title looks like. So this is a, a real example. Uh, this is Starbucks holiday blend. Now, as you can see, their main image is uh, just, you know, the same English. Um, everything here is in English because the packaging is in English, but this is the listing or this is the title, right? And so 
Um, you know, I'm just going to show you an example with just highlights so you can tell which part of this is, you know, what kind of character, right? So I'm going to just, um, these are the four, the Hiragana, Katakana, Kanji, and Romaji. I'm going to go to the next page. So here it is. So as you can see, what I've highlighted in uh, green is the Katakana script. And what this says is Starbucks. So this is Starbucks in uh, kanji. So it's a foreign word and they've used the, the foreign word script, which is katakana to represent it in the title. Um, and they've also used the Romaji version of it because this is a brand and people recognize it. Uh, plus they've also thrown in holiday blend because this is kind of descriptive of the product. And so it's okay to do this. And Japanese people are totally fine with this kind of mix and match. Um, uh, all right, so pay attention to this and this. These, uh, as you can see, these look like these complicated kanji characters, which you see in China. Uh, so these are kanjis, right? So this, the color pink is uh, for the kanji characters. And this listing somehow, the title didn't have any hiragana, which is fine. Uh, but sometimes they do. All right, so now we're going to do a little exercise and I want uh, you guys' help. Uh, so feel free to unmute yourself because I am going to, I'll need help here. So this is another listing and I want to drag these guys to wherever you think they fit so that you guys, you guys can recognize in this listing, which ones are hiragana, which words are katakana, which kanji and which romaji. All right, so I've just pulled four words in, in the interest of time. I've just pulled four words from here. So this one is the first one, and then this one, right? And then we ha have this, which is this guy here. And then finally we have um, this one, which is here, all right? So please help me. I'm gonna drag these based on what you guys think it is. Which, what type of script is this? And feel free to unmute yourself and, and uh, share. I think the first one is Hiragana. Yeah, exactly. So you got this right. All right. Then the second one is very obvious. It's Romanji. Yeah, this is Romaji. All right. This one. Um, is it Hiragana or Katakana? <laughs> yeah, this is actually katakana because it is, you know, see how pokey it is just by looking at it. Wow. It's, yeah, it's got no smooth surface. It's like kind of uh, very stark and very like edgy. So this is actually katakana. So this is, it, wow. it, it reads baby, which is this one. Um, so I'm going to put this here, right? So this is baby. And then the last one, of course, as you can see, is this complicated thing. This is kanji. All right, so great. So now you can recognize this. So now if you go to any listing, you should be able to, you know, basically highlight your run your highlighter and say, oh, this word, it starts here, it ends here, and this is katakana, you know, or this word ends, starts and ends here, this is hiragana and so on. So you will be able to do this now with this visual reference. Um, so what does this mean? This basically means that, as you can see in this listing, um, this is an Amazon product actually. So they have both these, um, you know, the English, the pure English, and they have like uh, Japanese subtitles. And in this subtitle also, as you can see, they've mixed up, they have uh, katakana, and then they have kanji, and then they have hiragana. So all of these, right? Now, these words could also be represented in other ways, like, um, you know, like, for example, this one is um, fuki, which means uh, wipe. So this could be represented in English, or it could be represented in uh, hiragana, right? So um, this basically means that when you're doing research for Japan, you've got to have a strategy that includes all four different alphabets. Like you have to do almost 4x the amount of work in order to 
uh, research these guys separately because uh, you never know how uh, people will be searching, right? They like this one says mama bear, but then Japanese people might type this out as, um, as this or even this. Uh, and it should be able to match it, right? So you have four times the opportunity that English has in order to conquer the market by being four times smarter <laughs> and doing the research on every uh, one of these, right? So that's the way to kind of um, uh, take advantage of, of this knowledge that Japanese people will use different variations of the same thing with just their different scripts. All right, okay, so next let's look at how we can do research. Now that we've seen, uh, you know, these different uh, alphabets, now how do we start research when we know nothing about the Japanese language? What's the way to do it? So the first thing I wanna point out is this uh, great tool, um, which I don't know if you guys have seen it or know about it, uh, but this is Google Japanese translation, and it also has a mini thesaurus kind of thing here with some explanation. Uh, now here is the um, URL in case you want to take a picture of it right now. You could; it'll lead you directly to the the page, so you have it with you. I'll just stay on this uh, for a bit if you want to take a photo. Uh, otherwise, you can grab it from the um, uh, the video later on. Um, but anyway, I wanted to show you how this thing works. So I have it over here and I'm gonna just take you here. So this, this is, um, let's start afresh. So this is the tool, right? It's Google Translate. It's different from the, the Google translation that you see in just Google, just plain Google, because that's just gonna give you one version of the translation. You don't want one version. You want as many versions of it as possible because you've just seen that Japanese people will use more than one way of saying the same thing. So let me type mask here, okay? And then let me pick Japanese here, right? So as you can see, this is a foreign word, it's mask, and they've just simply used um, the, the katakana script for as the most popular one. So the, the most popular version of this will show up here, but then they have frequency here and they have other versions also. So they have the same, um, same one here, but this second one, it also means other stuff. It means disguise. So you don't want this one, right? Obviously this is different. Um, this is a pack or a puck. This is also not a face mask, right? So we don't want a face mask. That's not what we want. This is surface, face, side, facet, mask. No, so this is also not what we want. This guy's veil, no, we don't want this. Uh, none of this, all right? So then you're pretty clear that this is the main way of using this uh, word and this is what you will pick. Now, let me show you another example. Uh, let me type spoon and pick Japanese, all right? So now here we're seeing a little bit more interesting stuff where you have all of these meaning spoon, right? So uh, the first, the most popular version, which they've said is most commonly used, this version, and then the less commonly used versions have these two bars and so on. So this, the next thing to do once you have this list is to check whether what you've got is actually correct because obviously you guys are blind because you cannot, you don't know the language, but what you can do is you can copy this out, right? You can copy this. You can go to Amazon, COJP, and you can type that in, that second character that I just, and now you see the visual confirmation of that word. So you know this is right. So that, that's your second keyword, you just picked it up, right? So you've got the first one, let's pick that up also, double check if this is indeed the right way of saying spoon. And it is, right? You've got all these spoons, everything is perfect. And uh, now let's look at the third word. What was that? The third word was this, oops. The third word is actually a mix of um, two scripts. They've mixed up the kanji with the hiragana. That's a lot of what people do there in, in Japan. So they will mix it up. So let me put that there. And again, you see, yes, this is right. So these are all spoons. Um, so 
you know, that's how you would go about finding your seed keywords. And you can do that. You can run through this whole list and find the seed keywords because then you want to put that those seed keywords into a spreadsheet like this, right? And I just dumped that here and I have a formula here, which is basically a Google Translate formula, which will basically convert from Japanese to English. So I'm just put, I'm pointing to this, uh, this cell and I'm saying convert this Japanese into English. So once you have that, um, let's see, once you have this, let's, let's pick this guy up, this guy, copy and paste and then i'm just going to put pull the formula down and there we go so you have two ways of confirming one way is going from english to japanese once you found the list then you want to do the reverse also to confirm that it is indeed that because if it isn't it could there's a lot of uh, similar sounding words in japanese which could mean completely different things so you want to make sure that you have a two-step process, first English to Japanese, then Japanese to English. Now you're sure that this list of whatever you come up with is uh, true and final. So that becomes your seed keyword pool for whatever product you have. All right, so yeah, so I just showed you this and uh, keep in mind there's a frequency here, which is really helpful and extra uh, descriptive words that tells you, basically it helps you to eliminate things that it is not, right? So that's the thing, uh, that's the advantage of looking at this extra information. All right, okay, so here are the steps to do keyword research. You start with your seed keywords in English. Then like I just said, use Google Translate, that tool that I sh shared to translate them into Japanese, find the most popular use usage and save it to a spreadsheet, then double check with English to Japanese to English. Then search them on Amazon COJP to confirm that what you're seeing is your kind of product and not something else. And then we'll do this next. We'll look at brand analytics and we're gonna do some fun stuff there, all right? So how many of you here have brand analytics? Um, I, don't, I don't have. <laughs> okay, you don't have. Raj, do you have brand analytics? This is for brand uh, brand registered sellers. So once you get brand registered, you will have access to it. Uh, or if you could, um, you know, uh, I'm gonna show it to you right now, so you can you can look at what it looks like, and then maybe if you have uh, somebody who can help you out, or if you want to use an agency, maybe you can. If you want to use uh, a service like PPC Ninja, also offers some services. Um, I'll mention them at the end, so you can use uh, help there to find out um, how popular a word is for Japan. All right, so let's look at brand analytics, the actual brand analytics. So this is what brand analytics looks like. Um, brand analytics is basically this huge database, huge database of top keywords on Amazon. And they actually uh, made this information available last year. And um, it's been so helpful because it helps to see which keywords are the most popular on Amazon, right? So at this point, point in Japan, PS5, PlayStation 5 was just, I guess, released recently. So this is the number three most uh, searched uh, word on amazon.co.jp, right? So this is the way to use it. This is basically their search frequency rank. I'm just gonna switch to English so that you guys can see. All right. So yeah, so this is what um, this is what it is. So there's the, the department, the words, and then search frequency rank. Now search frequency rank, basically the smaller the number, the more popular the word. And uh, the bigger the number, so I just sorted descending. So you have 400,000 400, words in, uh, in Amazon COJP that they're telling you about and they're actually giving you that information. This is great information because you can actually look at the top three sellers who are ranking for that keyword. So let's look at PlayStation 5, all right? So PlayStation 5, 
you click here and you can actually see the product detail, a snippet of it. You can see the main image, you can see what the title is, and you can see the ASIN, and you have a link to go directly to the page. So this is really great because, uh, so that's the first one. That's the first most clicked ASIN for that keyword. I'm gonna scroll right. The next most click, number two most click is this one, PlayStation 5, another version of it, right? Okay. And then scroll all the way right. And the third one is also PlayStation. So this basically uh, gives you all the different, I think they are just slight variations of each other. But anyway, it gives you the top three most popular um, ASINs for that keyword. Um, and what you can do here is you can, um, you can pick up your competitors. So let's say this is your competitor, copy this, put it here, paste it, and then say apply. So now Amazon is telling you that this ASIN ranks for these words. So it's almost like a reverse ASIN, but this information is coming from Amazon. So this is highly reliable and Amazon is giving this information to us, uh, which is great. The other way you can use this brand analytics is by typing a, a search, search term here and seeing who is ranking for that search term, right? So if let's say, if I, um, if I just type PS5 in here and I say apply. So now I see all the different keywords that have PS5 in them and all the different ASINs that are ranking for those variations of keywords, right? So this is how you would explore more and more and more search terms and also explore more competitors. Um, this is great. All right, so let's go back here. Now I wanna show you what I did with uh, four different variations of kids mask. So like I told you earlier that, you know, we wanna uh, make sure that we cover every variation because Japanese people can search any combination of that, like hiragana, katakana, uh, kanji, and English. So here's four variations of the same word uh, called kids mask. So the bottom one, of course, is the English form of it. So don't forget your English also, because there are people in Japan who are looking for products on uh, Amazon COJP in English. So you definitely want to make sure that you're covering that and you're including uh, those words in your um, back end and your listing somewhere and so on. So th these three versions, this is a hiragana plus a katakana. So this is Kodomo, this means child, and this means mask. So you have the hiragana version alongside the uh, katakana part of it. The next version is kanji version of the same word, kids, or it's basically spells out as kodomo. Kodomo, same word here, uh, but it's using the kanji script, not the hiragana. And this one is using a mix of this and this. It's almost like an amalgamation. So this character is coming from this first part and these two characters are coming from the second part and these two are matching here. So they all read the same Kodomo mask, mask, Kodomo mask, Kodomo mask. But look at the search frequency rank, which I just showed you on brand analytics. The smaller the number, the more popular the keyword. So in this case, it looks like even though all three variations are the same, but in terms of search frequency rank, this is the most popular version of it because it's got the smallest number, right? So obviously you've got to make sure that this guy here is on your listing as, as much uh, you know, to the top as possible, as close to the uh, head of the title as possible because that's what's going to give you the traffic because the more popular the keyword, and if you've got it in your listing, then the more traffic you're gonna get. So uh, obviously you wanna stay away from something that is uh, not so popular, but still included in your PPC, but on the listing, you wanna make sure that you have the most popular version of it. All right, so that's how you would do your research. So it's like to, uh, to double, you know, double check. Um, and then, all right, let's, let's just take a break here and um, find one more thing to say here. 
Um, okay, so good and bad keywords. Like, how would you find out what are good keywords and what are bad keywords? Um, you know, given what we know already. So, first thing to remember is that in Japanese, each character is considered a word with, um, as far as the algorithm is concerned. So, what does that mean? It means that if you use uh, hiragana, like if you use the hiragana Japanese script, and it's let's say you have a two uh, two letter word, right? Um, they will, when they do searching, they will actually uh, treat them as two separate words. So let me show you what I mean. Um, so here's the, um, these are two characters that I typed and I'm gonna read them out to you. This is ma-gu, okay? And ma-gu stands for mug or cup, right? Mug. So ma-gu is a mug, but what am I seeing here? <laughs> this is not a mug, right? How did this guy match to this? Well, it turns out that ku ma, which is this ku, ku and ma, you basically uh, flip them around and it becomes a different word, which means bear, right? And what do we see here? It's a bear. So basically the single word that um, we had in, you know, let's say our product was a mug and we looked for this word mug, mug, we typed it out. We actually also get some bears in there. I don't know what else they have, but um, yeah. So it turns out to be a little bit random. So this is where you have to be careful because if you, um, if you have this word as a, uh, let's say a broad match, right? It is going to match the reverse also. It will match this character followed by this character, which is not the case in English, right? If you say in English, you say, uh, let's say um, anything like cup, C-U-P, like you will always retain the C-U-P in, in one word, but based on what I explained right in the beginning that Japanese does not have any spaces, they, their engine has to figure out where does the word end. So with hiragana, the problem is that the word ends with every character. Like if it, <laughs> it could mean um, its own thing. Like this first one could actually be a standalone word um, and it would be very complicated, um, you know, to manage because it's, uh, it could match any combination of, of those two characters. So, um, Yes. Hi, Rita. Yes. Can, can, I, can I just ask for a little? Yes. Um, I, I, I understand that in like Amazon.com, the algorithm is like uh, when you when you PPC for a certain words, let's say it's like for a bear, then uh, it will uh, it will reveal a results in bear and bears. Uh, yeah. The bear, yeah, like with preposition and with uh, uh, with uh, S in in the end. Plurals, uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, uh, for this one, it's like uh, you, the the Japanese word is magu. You said before, right? Yeah. Magu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's broad match, it refers into gu guma. Yeah, think, right? exactly, exactly. Guma, guma is like a bear. Bear. Yes, you got it. I yeah. Just, I just want to ask: uh, Is gu if when you type in uh, is it hiragana? Mm -hmm. link. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When yes. you type in hiragana mm -hmm. in PPC when you when you when you spend PPC on hiragana yeah. version of Guma, mm -hmm. does it translate in result uh, in English version of it? Uh, no, Which is, it does not. Mm -mm. It does not. No, it does not translate. So that's why I said we need to have four different buckets of words. Uh, so that Amazon can actually give you the four different versions of it. So the guma and the katakana guma, they will be separate. And the kanji, there is a kanji for guma that will also be separate. So it'll never, um, it'll never kind of, for, for sponsored products, it'll never substitutes uh, this, uh, this script with the other script. Yeah. Oh, so, I see. Yeah, it'll, it'll remain 
in its uh, in its form, but with the hiragana version, there's an extra complexity that it can even swap them around and try to match them in a different way. So the hiragana is actually the dangerous one. The katakana is fine because it's a uh, foreign word and they have a different algorithm for foreign words. It tends to uh, only uh, it, it tends to stand alone, like it almost is. Uh, you know, easy to, to distinguish. Like over here, you can see from here to here, this is your katakana. So the engine will understand this, but engine may not understand one, two, three, these three characters, because each of them could be a representation of a kanji character. And they're just a pronunciation of that. So oh. the only thing you have to be careful is with the hiragana script. If you find any hiragana words, and in your PPC, just stay away from broad match for hiragana. That's the, the advice. Uh, you can use broad match for um, uh, katakana. You can use it for other stuff. So then they will find related synonyms and all that stuff. But with hiragana, it, there's a danger that, you know, if there is a different uh, ordering done, then could it match to something incorrect like this guy, Mama Bear? Oh, OK. Yeah. So Ritu, I have a question here. Yes, yes, yes. So this is a two word, right? You just saw the example is two words. So how about the more than two words is same uh, principle applies? Yeah, so that's a very interesting. I've been trying to research that and I have seen that more than two words, um, like three characters, even with hiragana uh, could be um, messed up, right? So let me, um, let me just... I'll show you, actually, I have a slide for that. So let me just show you there. So, okay, well, it's not two words, but I'll just show you. I, I did these two characters. This is ta and this is na. And if you see here at the bottom, they their words in, when I search for it, they're not even close to each other. So the first, the first word that shows up, it's creating you see what I'm saying? The green lines are showing uh, a different word. It's not even that word. Yeah. At the mm -hmm. bottom also, there's those two green lines are showing that they're separated and in, in a different order yeah. even. So they're not yeah. matching at all. So this is how the algorithm will treat hiragana. So we just have to be extra careful with it. If we're seeing in our search term that we're getting the like, garbage words, mm -hmm. then you know, be careful with those. Yeah. Now, how would you tell if they are garbage words? So let me show you how you can do that. So in PPC Ninja, if you are, you know, if you're using PPC Ninja and you go to your search terms or your, uh, in the search term uh, report, you get all of these, right? So what you wanna do is, let's say you keep finding stuff that has, um, where's the clicks? Um, yeah, here you go. So let's say you have, uh, let me put at least a hundred clicks. All right. Let's say I found two words that have hundred clicks. Now I'm going to copy this, right? Although the original was USB this. Now mm. I'm seeing that the buyer search is this. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go back to Google Translate, right? I'll put it in here. I'll just put the word that I found and then just follow the formula down and see what happens. So now I know that this is what translates to this. So it is legitimate and I, I can mm. be fine with it. But if it wasn't, if it was some garbage that got mixed up, got mm. uh, searched, then you can double check that here. Okay. So that's the way to, to use these words. Okay, great. All right. Okay, so next, uh, just uh, wrapping up with some best practices. Uh, so like I said, people mix and match alphabets in searches. So make sure you have you research all four alphabet words wherever applicable. So you have to be prepared for like four X the number of words that you have in English, right? So in English listings, you don't have this complexity. In Japanese, you do need to anticipate all the different versions. Um, again, like I said, avoid broad match for two character hiragana words. Instead use phrase match for this case. Phrase match is fine because that will retain the, the sequence, right? Just like you have phrase match in English, it's gonna keep that sequence in, that's fine. Um, then you want to pass your keywords through brand analytics, whatever keywords you research, pass them through brand analytics and check uh, the, um, you know, before you give this on to your translator or whatever, uh, you want to make sure that you found your seed keywords uh, that they should be working on. 
And then for ongoing discovery, for ongoing keyword discovery, use software. Like I just showed you those, uh, the search term report, use software for ongoing keyword discovery. And then um, only add newly discovered keywords that have substantial conversions, like maybe example five units sold over the past 30 days, not just for one or two, um, like you know how people do keyword harvesting. If you do it too soon, it, you might get some mixed results. So do like substantial, uh, at least five uh, orders over 30 days and add them as exact match because, um, because you don't know the Japanese language you don't want to mess with uh, broad match. Uh, you know, it's 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 too much to to keep track of. So just simply just do exact match. Uh, and then the final uh, thing I would say is always keep your campaign small. And this, of course, is applies to English and Japanese, any other language as well. Mm -hmm. If you can keep your campaign small with no more than ten keywords, you will see better results uh, because the budget gets distributed evenly, and you know it it is uh, easier for. Amazon to give you clear results. There's no data dilution over hundreds and hundreds of keywords. Don't do that. Uh, you want to consolidate and not uh, no, not go too uh, spread out. All right. So now let's see how you can use software for discovery of new keywords. Um, this is how you would um, set your things up so that you you can allow a software like BBC Ninja to give you. Uh, the, um, the, the, you know, the searches that uh, are actually working for you. So you start with an auto campaign to discover your long tail keywords. Obviously auto campaign is a no brainer. You want to have for languages that you don't know, you want to have an auto campaign because Amazon's algorithm will do all the matching from your listing and bring you the best keywords that match uh, those listings. Um, and then you want to start a manual campaign with the smallest number of keywords for your best results, maybe like one to two, just seed keywords, like just seed them so that you can discover from, you know, from those, from that list. Um, I would even go to the extent of saying, you know, try to create separate buckets for Hiragana, Katakana, Kanji, and Romaji, um, and also English, actually. Uh, Romaji is just the Japanese pronunciation of, uh, of the same thing that is hiragana or kanji. Uh, but um, actually, let me just add that I should have. Um, so wherever sometimes there's English words, like kids mask, you don't want to miss that out, right? So add that also, uh, create separate buckets. So keep uh, those clean, clean, don't mix them up because obviously the engine is going to work better for you that way. And then I want to show you how PPC Ninja actually helps you discover new keywords, especially for a language that you don't understand or know about. Uh, we basically publish uh, your um, new keywords, discover, discovered keywords from your search terms. We publish this every week. And all you need to do is add them, right, or reject them. So this is when you say plus, it just asks you where do you want to put them? And then you put them in the right campaign, and then you're done. Um, so for example, um, let me show you uh, the live software. So this is the this discover keywords thing, right? So this will basically, whatever keywords it finds, um, like this one, uh, you just say plus and you just add it to the campaign as an exact match. Uh, by default, we give you the same bid as the cost per click. So as you can see here, 50 yen, 50.23 yen was what you actually paid for it. And uh, this is what your bid will be, but you can change it to something else. Now, remember that these keywords have to be, um, you know, uh, they have to have orders. So in our case, we, for Japanese or English, we just put a minimum of two orders over the past 30 days. If you've had two orders, uh, we will flag that here as an important keyword to add. The second thing we do, which is really, really time saving, is that we've already checked that this word is not duplicated, which means you don't already have a campaign for that for that ASIN. You don't have a campaign that is uh, running on that keyword. So that does not exist. Now you can over here, you can just copy this. I'm just telling you this is for a microscope product. So I'm just gonna paste this here and see if the translation is right. And it is, right? So this is your secondary check to see you're not putting in garbage. So it's a quick check, um, easy peasy, um, and you can discover your keywords because we are doing the hard work of looking through all your search terms and targets 
and discovering those keywords for you. So this is a huge time saver, especially when you don't know the language. All right, okay, so I think that's, uh, we're coming to the end. Uh, we've talked about all these different concepts, how Japanese language is different and um, how you can do research with uh, brand analytics and also with Google Translate uh, and how to do double checks and stuff like that. So uh, in the end, I just wanna say that, you know, if you guys ever need um, our services, we also offer these services uh, for uh, a pay. So like we have Japanese keyword research. So if you just want us to do get Japanese keyword research for your product, we could do that or title optimization. We don't do translation. So for that, you will have to go somewhere else or you know, like, um, yeah, you, you need a translator for that. But before that, there is a very important step of actually telling your translator, hey, I wanna optimize for these keywords. Because if you just give your English listing to a translator, it's gonna come back very crappy and it's not gonna be optimized for Amazon, right? It might be optimized for human beings maybe, it might read beautifully or it might have all the concepts covered and so on, but it won't have, as per the data, it won't have the right keywords that will bring you the best results, the most traffic and the most popular uh, used words. So that is where, you know, someone uh, like PPC Ninja's keyword research can, uh, can bring you really good results. Uh, Japanese title optimization is another one where we look at your current title and arrange it in a way arrange it or replace words in a way that will bring you results. Um, we also do Japanese competitor research. We uh, look at who are the top players in your, in your, in your space and you know, how you can go after them with product targeting ads, which are really, really uh, important to run. And then we can also help you set up like a basic uh, campaign structure uh, with the keywords and so on. So I guess this and this are a combination because you want to do the Japanese keyword research and then create a campaign structure that's based off of that. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Do you guys have any questions? I'm happy to answer. We have a couple more minutes. Uh -oh. Ritu, I have one question here. Yes, yes. Uh, normally for .com, we optimize the title first, higher weightage, then followed by the bullet points, right? Yes. So how about the Japanese uh, version? Yeah, that, uh, that part remains the same. So basically the title uh, has to be optimized for two audiences. The first audience mm -hmm. is the, um, the algorithm because the algorithm needs to have the right words that have like rank juice and all that stuff. The second audience is the actual consumer, the actual shopper. So if you have any awkward kind of um, mm. wording, it's not going to appeal to them. So you need to have both these in mind. So it's in terms of prioritization, it has to be the title first, followed by the bullet, and then everything else, like search terms and stuff like that. Okay, okay, got it, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Right, any, any other questions or thoughts or comments? Um, hi, Ritu. Yes. Uh, so, um, I'm interested to know, like, uh, I think in, in Amazon.com, when we try to like optimize a listing uh, for a certain uh, product, we try to find a uh, most relevant keyword to to this product. But it might, let's say it's a face mask. So mm -hmm. it's one, one keyword and we, we then uh, put another keyword like a mask for, uh, a mask for adult maybe like that. So it's, it's two, two, two completely different phrase. Yeah, and we, we try to to uh we try to like um compile these different words, but yeah. relate to re relate to this product. But in 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 Japanese, mm -hmm. since the since of course the li there's a limitation limit, the character limit for the title and everything else. Yeah, but we try to put for one for one word in four different writing styles. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, so it's, it's what, what, what we actually do as like, so we only put one, one, one word, but with four different styles, or we also put like, uh, a lot of different word to, uh, a, a product. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand. So basically I would say that for your research phase, you want to make sure that you research everything 
and al always try to see if there's a brand analytics, um, you know, or if you have any other tools. Um, I think there's no, no other tools for Japan. That's the, the problem. Um, like even Helium 10 doesn't have Japanese support right now. So your best bet is actually brand analytics. Maybe Merchant Words has it, but I think they have Merchant Words has Japanese as an add-on, so it could be expensive. But when you're doing your research, you want to find the most popular usage uh, and prioritize that. If you can't uh, cover all of those variations in your listing, that's okay. Uh, you can cover those less popular ones like kid masks or whatever in your PPC, right? You can uh, bid on those and see if there's any traction, then maybe if those, there is a lot of traction, then you have a strategy of uh, in, including those those words maybe in the search terms, right? The search term field in the back end, that's where you could put a lot of the English words that don't show up in the front uh, or different variations of this that you may not be able to include. But try and ask your translator to include these variations as much as possible on the listing. So it's a challenge, which is why it is interesting because you have four times the number of uh, styles, right? Um, so yeah, a little bit of it is, is case by case, but for the most part, um, you want to follow this. You want to find what's the most popular way. Oh, actually the other thing you can also do is this, right? This frequency also tells you how popular it is. Um, you could also do um, Google Trends. That's another one where you can put in words and see comparatively which ones are um, more uh, used, uh, you know, and, and prioritize those. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I, I understand. Yeah, okay, cool. Awesome, any other questions? Um, yeah, I just wanna say that, uh, you know, I know that some people have uh, are familiar with our mastermind, but we're starting our new cohort in January, 2021. Uh, so that's only about four weeks away. So in case you want to join, please uh, email us um, and uh, we'll be happy to include you. It's a free uh, mastermind for four weeks. And we also have, uh, we also allow you to use the software during that time for free. So uh, it's pretty good. Um, I don't know if, uh, you know, uh, if, if this makes, it's not related to Japan, but it's just um, PPC fundamentals and, you know, um, Ritu, yes. I, I think Liliana is asking a question in the chat. Oh, really? I'm so sorry. I cannot yeah. see you. Wait a minute. Chat, chat, chat. All right, there we go. Oh, yes, uh, Liliana. Yes, we. Uh, I will send uh, a replay of this webinar. And I think I'll also put it on YouTube so you can check it out there, our YouTube channel. Uh, you can check it out there. Yeah, you're welcome. And how much is the cost of PPC Ninja? Well, um, if you're talking about the software, it's um, for up to 20 ASINs, it's $49 a month. Um, and again, it's pricing is based on ASINs and we have um, you know, all the information on our pricing page. So if you want to check that out or just you know, email us at support at ppcninja.com. Right. Awesome. Well, uh, if you if there is no other question, we've, we're almost uh, close to the one hour time, which we had planned. So yeah, thank you so much, guys, for attending and um, uh, look forward to working with you sometime in the future. Uh, thank Have you, Ritu. Great... Yeah, you're Ritu. welcome. Have a great weekend, everyone. Ritu. Okay, okay. take care. Bye-bye.